Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. You speak English like a native. You speak English fluently. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. Effortlessly. (laughs) When you join, when you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, that's the website where you join my VIP program. Where? at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to that website, commit to my VIP program, and you speak English powerfully. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. We're going to talk more about our challenge. I'm getting excited to do our challenge. Starting on Sunday, June 21st. Right now in Japan, it's the 18th. So just a couple more days. Looking forward to it. I've I've got my plan now. I have my personal plan of how I'm going to do it. You know, I'm looking to lose, let's see, 79, mm, six or seven kilograms. Not sure. I'll make a decision soon in the next couple days. Either six or seven kilograms. I want to get down to 73, 72, something like that. I'm going to do that by fasting. Then, uh, Then I want to just... I would say mostly just tone up, you know, just firm up my muscles a bit. Right now, my muscles a bit looking a little soft and small, (laughs) even for me. Um, So some good muscle tone, basically just improve my strength. So once I get to the, once I get to my weight that I want, my goal weight, then I'll maintain that weight and focus the rest of the time of the challenge. I'll focus on you know, increasing my strength, doing body weight exercises. And I have already have a plan for that too. So I'm more or less ready. Today, I thought I would share some cool resources. We can talk about, I just, I buy, I always buy lots of books on this topic about fitness and fitness, especially weight loss, fitness, health, nutrition. So I thought I'll just go through my Kindle and share with you some book titles, some books that I find interesting or useful, good information that you might be interested in. So you can write down these books if you want to. I'll put them in the comments for those watching live. Oh, also, first, though, I'll share you. Tell you what, I'm not going to share other people's pictures, obviously, but I will share my photo, my before, my beginning photo that I took this week. My wife took it. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll show you what I'm, what I look like right now. It's not great. <laughs> All right. Here you go. Dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Can I get, can I go down a little bit? Well, I guess you get kind of the idea from that photo there, right? I'm not sure if it's showing the whole thing right now. It's not. Oh, well. Good enough, close enough. You get kind of the idea, right? I've you, you can't quite right here. You can't quite see my little stomach. It's just around my waist. I tried to get an angle of the photo that would show you the fat around my stomach, because that's where it is. You can see everything else, in my upper body. That just not much muscle right now. The muscles are kind of soft, and I just have some fat around the stomach, which I don't like. Just basically, see, I, yeah, like I, a lot of people saying, AJ, you don't look fat, you don't look fat. But it's just kind of this, like my body looks really just kind of too soft. And it, it is there. It is fat, actually. It's, it's not, I'm not obese. I'm not even close to obese. Um, but for me, that's heavy. For me, that's the heaviest I ever get. 79, 80 kilograms is my max. And then I get very serious about losing weight because I don't want to, I never want to go over that. So it's just around, it's around the belly that you, I see it the most. And then everywhere else just looks kind of, we, we say flabby in English, flabby. Here's a nice word. Flabby means kind of 
like soft, not hard, not firm, right? Kind of like a little bit fat and kind of soft, uh, right? You don't want your muscles to look flabby. <laughs> Mine do right now. So that's my before picture. Then we'll have 10 weeks. I have 10 weeks. So I'll, I'll really quickly, I, I think that I can lose the fat in three weeks, maybe sooner, maybe faster. But I'll be doing fasting, snake diet fasting. And uh, I should be able to lose seven kilograms in three weeks. That should be no problem. So then that gives me so three weeks to lose the fat. That gives me seven more weeks after that to really work on muscle and strength. I'm not, I don't like, I'm not a bodybuilder. I don't care. I'm not going for appearance, really, when it comes to fitness or like uh, strength. I, I'm, I, I, I focus on my strength, what I can actually do, like getting stronger. When you get stronger, you're, you know, you do grow muscles too. But, um, you know, some people focus just on the size of the muscles and they don't care if they're really getting a lot stronger. But I'm the opposite. I don't really care so much about size of muscles. Uh, I just want to build. So I want to be able to do more pull-ups. I want to be able to do more push-ups. Uh, I want to do weighted pull-ups. Right now I can, I can do, I think I just tested myself, nine regular pull-ups, which is eh, so-so. Um, I'd like to get that. First, I'll try to get up my normal pull-ups, regular pull-ups to about 12. And then I'll start to do weighted pull-ups where I add weight, um, some something heavy on my back, usually in a backpack, maybe a baby. <laughs> uh, and then so and then I'm doing pull-ups with that extra weight, which obviously will then drop down the number I can do, but it makes it more intense, more difficult. So I'll be doing push-ups, pull-ups, uh, handstands. I can't do handstand push-ups right now, but I can do handstands. You just put a handstand and you hold it for as long as possible. Usually about a, for me, about a minute probably I can do right now, which again is not very long. For my legs, I'm not sure. I'll probably do sprints up the stairs. So stair sprints uh, just to work my legs. That's about it. I like to keep it simple. Uh, usually I will do kettlebell overhead press, but right now my wrist is hurt. I can't do kettlebells right now. So I'll be doing the handstands instead to work my shoulders. So that's it. So it's, it's not many exercises. Oh, maybe I might do some dips, what are called dips. Dips are when you have a bar. There's a few ways to do it. Usually you have two bars, like parallel bars, like gymnasts use those, right? Or you can use rings. And you put them below you. And I'll see if I can show you on here. Right? And you're holding and then you dip down. You, you lower your body down and then you push yourself up. Lower your body down and you push yourself up. Of course, the bars don't move. You move. It's also a good arm and chest exercise. So there you go. All right, so now let's just, uh, I'll, let me open my Kindle up and I'll share with you if, just some of the books I like and also some websites. First of all, let's start with Snake Diet since that will be the one I'm using for weight loss. And let's go to, because some of you ask, I know you're curious about the snake juice. And he has, so you go to snakediet.com. If you're interested in doing the snake diet, uh, go to snakediet.com. Let's share my screen for video. All right, he's got some nice before and after pictures. People send him a lot of great ones, really great ones. Wow, nice. Um, but anyway, at the top uh, of his website, there's a menu and it says getting started. So click getting started. And here you go. It's got, he's got everything how it works, the routine, getting started, side effects, tip for success. There you go. And he tells you, here's the supplies you need, the snake juice recipe right here. Here you go. Now, you can, you can vary this a bit, like I do mine a little more uh, concentrated. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Just follow what he says. So he's got potassium chloride. This is also called No Salt. That's one of the brand names. You can get it on Amazon.com. Um, potassium chloride. People who have high blood pressure use potassium chloride uh, instead. It's, it's a salt substitute. So a lot of times people, they're avoiding sodium 
they will use this. So you can usually find it because of that. You can find it. Potassium chloride or just search for no salt is the brand name. Sodium chloride is salt. It's just regular salt. He says Himalayan pink salt. You can do that <laughs> if you want, you know, nice, some really nice salt or sea salt. You can do something like that, but you don't have to. You can just do uh, regular old cheap salt that you find anywhere at the store. That's fine. Then he has uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. This also gives you some salt. This is nice because it actually helps your kidneys a bit during the fasting. Sometimes kidneys get a little, uh, you might call it heated, or they have to work a little harder sometimes during fasting. So um, the baking soda alkalizes your body. It's Alkaline is the opposite of acid, right? So if your body's becoming acid, it kind of stresses your body out. Well, by drinking some baking soda, by putting baking soda in this snake juice and drinking it during your fasting, uh, it will alkalize your body. This is Baking soda is a very strong alkalizer, good for your kidneys, good for your body in general. And it'll give you some salt, too, that you need. And then he recently added also magnesium sulfate. This is Epsom salts, food grade. This one's optional. It's optional. If you're doing short fasts, if you're doing like two-day fast, even three-day fast, you don't have to do the magnesium. Uh, but it doesn't hurt. Adding a bit of magnesium, it'll help your sleep. Helps, uh, magnesium is just, an, again, something that will, uh, again, it's no calories, but it will. it's just good for your body. Helps you sleep, helps you stay calm, helps your muscles, a lot of other things. So, uh, again, Epsom salts are usually pretty easy to find. Just get food grade. It means it's food quality. Food quality Epsom salts. And again, if, if for some reason you can't, the, the, the two super important ones are the potassium chloride and the sodium chloride. Salt and potassium. Must have those. So you just you you put these, he has the amounts, one teaspoon, half teaspoon, you know, you see, on the website, and then in two liters of water, and then you just drink it all during the day. So this gives you step by step everything to do, how to do the snake dieting, which is actually very, 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 very simple. So it's snakediet.com, and then at the top, getting started. Click getting started and read the whole thing. Highly recommend you do that. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. A couple more I'm just going to share with you my screen, and I'll share a couple books uh, that I have mentioned before, but these are good ones. So one is called, okay, this one, Starting Strength. If you can see, I don't know if you, can, you can't quite see it. Let me move it. Okay, yeah, it's called Starting Strength. Strength. And it's by Mark Ripitone. Mark Ripito, I'm sorry, Ripito. Mark Ripito, R I P P E T O E. Starting strength, basic barbell training. Starting strength, basic barbell training. If you want to do weightlifting, highly recommend that book. Very, very, very good. Especially if you're a beginner. Especially if you're a beginner, uh, you're not like already a serious uh, weightlifter. Really, really, really good. Another one. This one's for body weight, which is, again, excellent. It's one that I have followed for many years. Convict Conditioning by Paul Wade. Okay. Convict Conditioning by Paul Wade, which is, may not be his real name, actually, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? Um, okay. Okay convict conditioning now this has what's great about this it has body weight exercises for strength training right so push-ups why did why have a whole book about this because he has he calls these progressions so he has all he has six core exercises to get your whole body strength and then for each exercise he has different variations right some are very very easy if you're not strong then like for example if you 
let's imagine, let's say you're, you're very weak. You cannot do a normal push-up, right? Regular push-up, you can't do one. So what do you do? How do you train? You want to get stronger. How do you become stronger if you can't do one normal push-up? Well, you do an easier version of a push-up. Some of you know, you know, knee push-ups. You drop your knees to the floor. That's easier. If you're really, really weak, you could do a wall push-up where you're standing and you just kind of lean against a wall and you push against the wall, right? Very, very easy. So he has, you know, a series then from the very uh, easiest and then to very, very difficult. So what if you can do 50 push-ups? Do you just keep going forever? Some people do. They just do 50. They do 100. They... But if you want to increase your strength, actually what you should do, what you need to do, is do a harder version of a push-up. So what? there he has several that are harder than normal push-ups. And the most difficult is a one-arm push-up. A nice, clean, controlled, slow, one-armed push-up. Not easy. I can't do it. Same with pull-ups, right? What if maybe you can do normal pull-ups after you do ten or twelve of those? Um, there's not much point to keep going and doing more, 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 unless you want endurance. Uh, if you want to get stronger, then you have to somehow make it more difficult. So what can you do with pull-ups? It's fairly easy. You can add weight, so you can wear a backpack and put put water or weights inside of it, water bottles. Uh, or there are other there are other types of pull-ups you can do. And again, the most difficult kind of pull-up would be a, a strict one-arm pull-up. Just one arm pulling your whole body slowly and controlled. Again, very hard and very difficult. I certainly can't do it. And then same thing. He has handstands. After handstands, you do kind of like part handstand push-ups, then a full handstand push-ups. And then again, the hardest would be a a one-armed handstand push-up. Super, super, super difficult. <laughs> you get the idea. But this book, it tells you about the techniques, and it describes all of these variations, these kinds, and it's just using your, your own body, right? And maybe a bar, like a pull-up bar. But no weights at all, but you can build a lot of strength with this program. Convict conditioning is very, very, very good. All right. Now, for on the food side... I have a few. One, um, there's a few, but, you know, the Primal Blueprint is one that I highly recommend, okay? The Primal Blueprint. And this is basically a way of eating that's fairly low carb, um, fairly low carb. It's not quite strict paleo, but it's, it's just lots of vegetables, lots of vegetables and lots of protein and, and healthy fats. And a minimum of carbs, most of the carbs come from the vegetables and uh, some fruit. Anyway, it's very good. It's very, very, very good. Uh, the, the Primal Blueprint. And it's by Mark Sisson. S-I-S-S-O-N. S-I-S-S-O-N. The Primal. Primal is P-R-I-M-A-L. The Primal Blueprint. Primal means like... Uh, very kind of old and ancient and natural, ah, like a caveman, ah, primal, right? It's something that's like in our instinct, that's in our basic biology, primal. It's deep, deep, deep inside of us, almost genetic, right? Okay, and I think that those those probably give you a pretty good. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then if you're into if you're into running, or uh, you want to do some kind of uh, endurance training, I recommend the book Slow Burn. Some of you guys know about this one. I've done a lesson, a whole lesson about this book. Slow Burn. And I'll put it in the comments here. Slow Burn by Stu, S-T-U. And then it's Middleman, M-I-T-T. M-I-T-T-L-E-M-A-N by Stu Middleman. Slow Burn. As you might guess, so it's about running. He focuses on running, but the ideas that he teaches work also for cycling or uh, swimming or triathlons. Same, the same ideas work for any endurance, long-distance endurance training. This guy was an ultra, like a very, very, very long-distance uh, runner. Still is, I think. Um, 
yeah, so Stu Middleman, slow burn. All right, so that's those are just my suggestions on for a challenge. A few, uh, a few resources, a few books you might want to check out and read. Read them in English. It's a good way. This is a way you could start, you know, get into your, uh, get some new, more vocab in English. I don't know if those have audiobooks, but uh, you can certainly try to check and see. But even, even if they don't, I recommend then just read the books. And it's a good way to learn vocabulary connected to health, nutrition, fitness, and to learn some really useful stuff. Alrighty then, let's get into our comments and questions. Jarmila says, I've decided to do the slimming down as well, to see the slimming group enthusiasm, but only without my pictures. That's okay. <laughs> Some of you might be a little shy or feel strange about um, uh, putting your pictures, you know, you feel embarrassed or something. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to do the pictures. It's not, you know, you know. But actually, here's what I recommend, though. I do recommend Jarmila. I recommend to anyone. If you, if still take the picture, but just for yourself. So do it. Take a picture now. Do your before picture, your beginning picture, and just put it on your computer or leave it on your phone. You don't need to show anybody. You do not need to post it online if you don't want to. You don't have to put it in our Gab group. It, I, you know, I did. Lots of people are putting it, but if you feel weird about that, if you feel embarrassed or whatever, uh, but it's okay, but just do it for yourself. So then t after 10 weeks, you at least have before and after, and you can compare for yourself. It'll make you feel good. You'll realize how much progress, how much success you have had. Hadi says, fasting and decreasing fat, sugar, salt in your meals uh, also, doing sports plays a big role in losing weight. Yep, all these things, pretty good. The salt, it depends. Uh, it depends on how much you're getting, how much you're sweating, if you're fasting, how much you drink, how much water you drink. So, not everybody needs to reduce salt. Namal says, are there any varieties among men or women? Um... I, I guess are you asking, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Are you talking about the exercises for convict conditioning? No, it's just easy or difficult. So women usually are going to be not, a, not as strong as a man, right? On average, they're going to be weaker. But so that you, you just use, like if a woman cannot do a full push-up, then she can do one of the easier versions. But some men are also weak for whatever, for different reasons. So it doesn't matter, man or woman, it, no 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 difference it's just how strong are you right what can you which exercise can you do you just don't worry about it don't no ego necessary just find the one that works for you that's your right level start there and then you gradually will build up Yeah, like Albert Amani says, reducing the number of meals one takes every day can be a very good idea to lose some weight. Uh, this is essentially what's called intermittent fasting. Intermittent means like sometimes. Also, water fasting and dry fasting are powerful tools. Yes. Eat only in what keeps you alive and active. Yes, I agree. Okay. Oh, wow. Vladislav says, I saw a video with 100 levels of push-ups. Yeah, you, there's always ways to make it more difficult, including with push-ups, you can also wear weights or put weight on your back. But a lot of it is just changing the angles and, you know, one-arm push If you can do one-arm push-ups strict with, like, perfect form, that's... It's not easy. You're, you're quite strong if you can do that. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to get up to that level. Uh, Irina says, uh, can you tell us the frequency of your fasting? When you eat, what you eat, etc. I will as I go. Um, mostly I'll be doing 
two and three day fasts. Probably it'll be mostly two day fasts, 48 hours. I might do, or at least try to do a three day at the beginning, 72 hours, then eat one meal and then go into the next fast. The next fast, I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, sometimes I adjust it how I'm feeling, but last time I did it last year, I did, I think one, three day, or maybe two, three days, different times. But most of the, mostly I did 48 hour fasts. What did I eat? I would just eat whatever my wife made for dinner, just a normal dinner, Japanese style dinner, uh, not too heavy. And then during the day, drank the snake juice water. Tata says, what about good sources for gaining healthy weight? Read that Starting Strength book, that one that I recommend. Mark Ripito, Starting Strength. That's a good healthy way to gain weight. Because when you say healthy gain weight, what do you mean? You mean muscle. You're trying to gain muscle. How do you do that? I mean, the best way is you lift heavy weights and, uh, and then get plenty of protein. Hmm. Sarah says, I tried a lot of diets. It was difficult, especially 48 hours fasting. Fasting gets easier as you do it more. So I'm trying to do the keto diet now. It works for me. Yeah, keto's good. I'm walking every day at least one hour a day. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Which exercise is my favorite? Um, for body weight, I like pull-ups. Pull-ups are my favorite. I do chin-ups, actually. I think they're technically called chin-ups because I have an underhand grip, um, which I find for my shoulders and my uh, uh, elbows works better. Uh, a lot of people will call a pull-up an overhand grip, which is a little wider. I found it's, doing those it sometimes will cause problems with my elbows a little, so I prefer the underhand grip which I guess technically is called a chin-up usually. That's my favorite. And then for weightlifting, I like deadlifts. Deadlifts are my favorite. Actually, that's the, what I'm going to do for my legs. And deadlifts are not specifically a leg um, exercise. They, I mean, they, but they do hit the legs. You know, they do... I think they hit the legs enough for my purpose, for what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be a serious bodybuilder. So I'll probably be doing some deadlifting um, just with my heavy sandbag. Again, it's not, this, it's not as heavy as a, some people who do it in the gym, but it's heavy enough for what I'm trying to do. You know, I can do those deadlifts. And I maybe have to do eight. Like in the gym, if I'm doing deadlifts, I will do only like three, you know, two or three at reps, right, in, at one time. Uh, so pretty fair, it's, I go heavy, heavy for me. Um, with a sandbag, I can probably do seven or eight in a row. Um, but it's good enough. So anyway, thanks, Amet, for the question. Jen Xing Mao says, bodybuilding has tons of exercise to start with. Also, yoga with Adrian is awesome cool yeah yoga is cool too i know a lot of people get very nice uh health benefits and strength and fitness benefits from different types of yoga a lot of people do um I, i've never done it enough to do that i've always just used it as kind of a little way of stretching uh, but i think yeah yoga is great it's one way to do things Yeah, Ken says, we have a lesson called slow burn. I'm trying to do this method and make my body more alkaline. Yep, yep. Doing long dances, Army Ant says, is good for, for the muscles and makes you feel good. Yeah, that's a great idea. There are lots of different kinds of dancing you could do. So, and some of them are really great. Cardio, burning, you know, anything you're doing that's moving your body is good especially like while you're fasting if you all just keep moving your body that's cole robinson's recent video talks about that just try to keep moving all day mm. 
Okay. Alanicon says, it's nice to see our Gab group very active now. Challenges make people get more energetic, enthusiastic, and active. That's why we do these challenges, because, right, it gives us something all to focus on and share information about. And so it does, it brings us all, everybody together. Even something like this that's not even focused on English. But uh, it is, it's fun. I've noticed that too, the Gab group. Lots of people posting their photos and talking about their ideas of how they're going to lose weight or get more fit. So very good. Thanks, uh, Celio Cruz says it's a nice topic today. Okay, Leonardo Parigi says, which fitness books, workout books do you recommend for advanced people to read in English? I still would recommend Starting Strength because uh, it's not only for beginners. Uh, it's, it's a very, very good book uh, about building strength using uh, weightlifting. And again, the convict conditioning, if you want to do more body weight, it's also good for advanced because it has the advanced versions of diff all these different um, exercises as well. So I still recommend those two if you're talking about strength workouts. And for runners, still slow burn, slow burn. So these books are really actually, those three books I mentioned, they're good for beginners or advanced. It doesn't matter. You can, they have suggestions for both. Okay, and he says, I'm trying to do 30 minutes of jogging every day. I'm in the 11th day now. I think I, I think I did a great job of trying to make it like a habit. Oh, that's great. 11 days in a row, 30 minutes. Perfect. Perfect. Ah, I'm going to give you another book. This is actually more for the... Oops, this is more for beginners, actually, for beginner runners. Uh, but not necessarily. Any runners could use this book. Beginner or older runners. So... Um, Jeff, here it is. It's called Running Until You're 100. Let me see how I put the title cover. Running Until You're 100 by Jeff Galloway. Let me type it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Running Until You're 100 by Jeff Galloway. He's got, he's a, he obviously he focused on running and uh, for beginners and advanced runners. Stay injury free and enjoy running more than ever for runners in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Honestly, I think it's, I, I disagree with that title because uh, I think that any age, even young runners, this is excellent for anybody who's running for health and enjoyment. Now, if you're trying to run for speed, like you're trying to be competitive, you're trying to compete, you're trying to win races or, you know, really get your speed up, you know, faster. OK, this is probably not the book for you. This is more about. But if you're interested in more in, in distance, like maybe doing marathons and then maybe even going longer, doing ultra marathons, uh, then this book is great. Even I think this is a great method of training running uh, for very long distance runners, even younger. I think it's really good. Uh, it's not for, you know, it's not for competitive runners. That's the point. It's not for people who are trying to win races or anything like that. But, but for most other people, it's a really good book, Running Until You're 100. So highly recommend that book too. Okay. So anyway, that, that back to, you know, the comment about running 11 days straight. Very good. If you want to look into what you can do next, now you're getting the habit of running 30 minutes. It's probably about three miles a day. That's really good. Um, you're doing great. I'd say the only thing now is as that gets becomes a habit, you would add one long run if you're interested in doing that. Uh, one long run a week. Do it the way Jeff Galloway teaches you to do it because it'll prevent injuries and you'll gradually increase your distance and endurance. It's quite fun. 
Um, Matt says, deadlift is a dangerous exercise. Should be careful with heavy weight. No, I disagree completely. That's why I, it's why it's my favorite. I find the deadlift is a very, 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 very safe. I feel it's the safest uh, exercise of the big major um, lifts for weightlifting. I find deadlift is absolutely the safest. Uh, and you can just think about why that is. A deadlift is there's a bar on the ground. You bend over and you pick it up straight, you, you know, and you stand up holding the weight. Why is it safe? Because you're not under the weight. Like if you squat, you put the weight on your shoulders and then you have to go down, bend your knees, right? This is more dangerous. You've got the weight on top of you. If you fall, if you can't, uh, if, if, you, if it, you fail, it means your muscles can't, you're, you're down and you can't go, right? Now you're under the weight. What do you do? You got to drop it possibly on yourself, or you could, if you fall or something, the weight comes right down on top of you. Same thing with a bench press. You're doing a bench press. If someone's not there helping you to catch the weight, if it's too, if it's too heavy, it's going to come right back down on top of you. Potentially dangerous. I mean, not really very dangerous, but a little bit. Um, on the other hand, a deadlift, you can just let go. doesn't matter. You're not under the weight, so you can safely drop the weight at any time. That's why I feel it is absolutely the safest. It's also it's just a great exercise, and you know if you're starting to lift, let's say you're starting a deadlift, and oh, you're you start lifting, you lift, you know you're maybe halfway, and you feel something in your muscle like a pain or something, just drop the weight, just let go, and it bang, and it'll drop on the ground. Nothing, nobody's hurt, nothing happened. It's no problem, and uh, you can do it as soon as you feel anything weird, so you don't cause a serious injury. And you're not going to hurt yourself. So I actually feel that the deadlift is a great one in terms of heavy lifts, in terms of lifting heavy. Most people will focus on squat and deadlift as the two really, really big, heavy, the heaviest uh, lifts, the heaviest exercises uh, that really hit your whole body or almost your whole body. Of those two, my, you know, I feel that the deadlift is far safer. Yes, there's still a technique. You don't want to hurt your back, but uh, it's a pretty simple technique, really. Um, I, I find it's simpler and way safer than, this, than the, the squat. Maybe that's me. I've got very long legs. I find squatting very hard to do. Ali Sharifi says my favorite is bicycling. Nice. Yeah, Anderson Galval says, chin-ups will not only exercise your back, but also your biceps very strongly. It's a good option to exercise the biceps at home. Absolutely, very, absolutely true. Very, my bicep, when I was doing a lot of pull-ups, I don't know, a few years ago, uh, my biceps definitely got bigger. <laughs> and the other thing I noticed that at the time when I was doing um, jiu-jitsu, I was doing a lot of pull-ups at that time, and I was doing jiu-jitsu, and it, my grip, so my ability to grab and hold, and my ability to pull in, you know, using the bicep and my back to pull, um, were I was for my size, for my weight size, I was pretty strong with those movements, which are important movements in jujitsu. I could kind of grab onto somebody and hold in, and uh, now I was using not because my technique sucked. <laughs> I was using <laughs> trying to use my strength, but I had decent strength, you know, for my for my size, weight, and age. Uh, Pull-ups are a great activity. They hit a lot of muscles. Really, really good. Chin-ups, too. Chin-ups. And like you said, chin-ups will hit the biceps more. So if you're looking for that kind of, you know, that raw thing, you know, with the the classical bicep. Uh, it's a good bicep exercise. It is. I can't say I understand this comment. Um, what is the difference between Zumba or sporting? Which has more advantages? I don't know what sporting is. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Zumba is like a dance thing, right? I, Zumba is more like a, a like a women's dance thing, I think. I don't really know. I, I've I've seen the name Zumba, Zumba classes. It's some. Uh, is it like an kind of an aerobics thing? I, I'm not really sure. Maybe some of you know. Uh, let me know. Sneha says, World Yoga Day is June 21st. There you go. 
you can start a yoga practice uh, on the same day that our challenge starts. AJ, how much time do you spend in the gym? Asked Pablo. Uh, oh, no, is it Paulika? One second. I just lost my comments. Paulika, uh, no, is it? Hmm. Sorry, I just lost the comment. Someone, uh... huh? I don't know where it went. Someone, anyway, someone said, "How much? How much time do you spend in the gym?" None. I don't. Oh, here it is. It's relaxing. Nature sound says, "How much time do you spend in the gym?" None. I don't. I don't go to a gym. Uh, when do you start exercise? Right now, I'm not doing anything. I'm only walking. Um, when I start. I'll probably start doing a little bit so starting Sunday and then uh, but once I'm mostly focusing on fasting so when I'm fasting it's, it's hard to do a lot of exercising once the, I lose the weight I'll probably be doing three days a week of body weight exercise just the playground and in my house not no gym Ma Davi says a ginger drink before breakfast can help burn belly fat. Also ginger. Interesting. Ginger has some good health benefits. Je Jafar says, uh, I asked my sister to help take the pictures. I will post them soon. I look skinny in the picture. Different than my look in the mirror. <laughs> it's okay. Cool. I walk for two to three hours every day after waking up. It's is that healthy? Yes. Is it healthy enough? Do I have to go to the gym to lose weight? In fact, I lose two kilograms in one, one week. No, for losing weight, that's fantastic. That's great. As, as if you're eating well, if you fast even, uh, and you're walking two to three hours a day, perfect. If you want to gain muscle, you have to do some. You have to do more. Walking does not build muscle. Amina says, I think the very thin person can't make muscle. It's just some, I think they can, but maybe, you know, there, there is a genetic part to it. Um, I think everybody can increase their strength and can increase their muscle. But what's the maximum? You know, like it, it, that definitely is different for each person, right? Not all of us can uh, look like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was young or something like that. That's true. But if you're very, very thin, you can build enough muscle where you look good. I think you can do that. And you and, and you got some strength. Focus, I, I like the, you know, quite honestly, when it comes to muscle, I prefer, I think it's better, focus on strength. The muscle will come, some of it, but for some people, the muscles will get big. Some people, maybe not so big. But instead, focus on what you can do. How much weight can you lift in those exercises? Or if you're doing body weight, how, like how many pull-ups can you do? Can you do, uh, can, like I used to be able to do the, the Rocky pull-ups, I call them, like the one hand here and one on my wrist. It's kind of like one and a half arm pull-ups, something like that. Um, I don't know. I might still be able to do one of these. I'm not sure. Um, or doing pull-ups, maybe with, say, with 10 kilograms on my back. What Then try to do it with 20 kilograms on my back. What about 30, right? How? So this is, you just focus on what you can do. And because you can measure that, then you know your strength is increasing, and you don't worry so much about how it looks. Paulika says, I prefer slow burn rather than fast running. Sometimes I run genuinely slowly. Yes, I do. I like that too. I like long distance and slow when I do running. I haven't done running in quite a while, but I agree. You know, I, I when I was younger, I did, I went through a a period of time when I kind of early when I was doing running where I would did 5k's and 10k's and I was really focused on trying to improve my speed uh, and then eventually it was I changed and just like doing longer Kumi Punk says it's my rule to do 20 squats every time I go to the bathroom good I guess you're talking about body weight squats but great great 
Irina says, I'm, it's a great benefit working with the group. I'm fasting. I'm hungry. But in this moment, I think EE friends and I'm starving further. Keep going. Keep going. Drink the snake juice. The snake juice does help. It'll help you feel better during your fast. Didar says, I think fasting is one of the best methods for fat loss. I think it's the best method. I mean, really, if you think, like, what could be better than not eating anything? <laughs> I mean, like, what can possibly be faster than that other than fasting plus doing some exercise? Uh, Sarah says, do you think it's okay to do, drink something to give you energy before going to the gym or not? Yeah, I think it's okay. If you're going, especially if you're going to do intense something intense right like you're gonna lift heavy weights that right you really need some extra energy so like drinking a cup of coffee or something uh right before you lift weights a lot of weightlifters do that so it can help it can help you have a more uh powerful workout for running not so much but uh for weightlifting i'd say yes Yeah, and Leonardo, it makes a good point. How much an exercise is safe or not depends in, depends if you do it in the correct way. That's exactly right. So squatting, is, some people say, is squatting dangerous? Well, it's dangerous if you do it badly, right? Without, say, without the proper equipment, with the bad technique. If you have a very good technique, if you use a, what's called a squat rack, it's a safety device. So if, you use, if you're in a squat rack, it's designed to catch the weight if you drop it. Um, so if you do that and you have a good form, squatting's fine, right? And that's true for all the exercises. That's true. It's also true for running. You know, people say, oh, running will destroy your knees. It'll No, not if you do it right. Not if you don't. If people who destroy their knees running is they do too much too fast. If, if you go more slowly, if you follow this slow burn, if you follow the Jeff Galloway method of running, your knees will be totally fine. In fact, you'll have stronger knees. Okay, Zobade says, do you remember how you got ready for the Camino? Did you follow a specific training plan? Um, yes, I did. So it's pretty similar to what I'll be doing. Um, for the Camino de Santiago, when I was training, I followed that running till you're 100. The book I just recommended, I followed the, one of the plans in there for a marathon training. So basically, before the Camino, I trained for a marathon, to run a marathon. In fact, uh, one week before the Camino, one week, well, one week before flying to Spain, I ran a marathon in San Francisco. So I basically did marathon training. Um, and then in, in addition to that, I did the convict conditioning strength exercises. That's the strongest I've been, because during the Camino is when I finally was able... Finally, after a lot of work, I finally could do uh, handstand push-ups. I think I got up to three handstand push-ups, right? Doing a handstand and then going down, you know, like an upside-down push-up, uh, which is not easy, not for me at least. So I was pretty strong and I uh, had really good endurance. I was in good shape then. I have a check total health with Dr. Nick already. Haven't not yet. I haven't, Pavlik. I'll check it out. James Smith says I did fasting ten years ago for for, for four a four day fast. Good, 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 good. Stefan says, Have you ever heard of plant based diets? Yes, I was a vegetarian for thirteen years, <laughs> uh, so I, I have heard of it. What do you think about it? Um, it's okay. I think vegetarian's fine. It can be done um, in a pretty healthy way for, with, for a lot of people. Uh, there actually is, you know, a whole culture in India that has a pretty long history with vegetarian diets. Also, um, uh, several, like you know, uh, for example, Buddhists. Uh, monks in Japan and other places have been doing vegetarian for quite a long time. So you can follow, when you follow one of those systems, uh, I think it can work. Vegan, on the other hand, uh, I think is uh, not for most people. 
I won't say I won't say in I'm not gonna make an absolute statement about it but I think uh, like I tried vegan and it was not for me (laughs) not for me my wife tried it and she was her health went down so fast when she tried it she was perfectly healthy she tried it so uh, yeah so so you know I think like kind of regular veg what is what I would call regular veg you can get enough protein you can do pretty well it's possible but um I would not recommend vegan for most people and you can try anything you want but uh that's my opinion and and I have tried them Ali says my friend is very skinny he wants to become fat (laughs) or at least gain weight yeah gain weight what Becoming fat is crazy. Why would he want to become fat? What do you consult for him? Lift weights. Lift weights, eat protein. Lift weights, eat lots of protein. He should read that book, Starting Strength. That's what I recommend your friend. Read the book, follow the plan. Annette says, I power walk every day except Sunday. I want to increase my stamina. It's a therapy for me. Very good. Very good. Oh, cool. Ani says, I'm reading the contents of the book, Running Until You're 100 Right Now. Seems good. It's very good. If you're into running, follow the system. It works very well. I've used it myself. Okay, AJ, you have endless energy. How can you get this? I would not say that. (laughs) But, um... The slow burn book is really great for increasing your overall energy, your kind of all day, every day energy. Recently, I've not felt very energetic because of lack of sleep. I've talked about this, you know, because of my babies and lack of sleep is, oh, it's hard to deal with. There's no, there's really not, I don't know any way to deal with it. Um, but anyway, (laughs) otherwise I'm pretty energetic. Yeah, like Paulika says, I found out my own diet includes many fish. I agree, fish are great. Eggs, eggs are fantastic. And, uh, of course, veggies. Yeah, I'm more of the, what seems to fit me is that primal book I recommended, the primal blueprint. When I follow something like that, I feel the best. So I go by how I feel. Jinxing Mao says proper breathing and weightlifting will help you do proper form. Yeah, the breathing is actually important also for body weight. Breath control. Sometimes you actually hold, you can hold your breath at certain points and it helps. Um, yes, this is right. Okay. I think it's about time to go. So, here we go. So, just a review then. We're going to get started. So, Sunday, we start our challenge. Oh, I need to do the, uh, okay, I'll try to remember tomorrow. I need to do the, uh, we'll use the same website called uh, Challenge Runner, Challenge Runner. And that's the one where we will, you can uh, enter how many kilograms. We'll do kilograms since everybody, that's what most people know. How many kilograms have you lost? So every time you, um, every time you lose a kilogram, you can enter it on the website, and we'll see who's who's losing the most weight <laughs> and the fastest, right? So that's part one of the challenge, and part two of the challenge is how you look. Take a take a picture now before we start. So a nice picture, you know, with a, like a swimsuit on or something, so we can see, or at least so you can see your body. If you want to, you can put the put your picture on our Gab group, G, Gab, G-A-B dot com, the Gab group, Effortless English group on Gab. If Or you can just have the picture for yourself. If you're shy about that, that's fine too. So those are our two challenges. All righty. Check out those books that I mentioned. They're good. It's, it's, see, it's a good way. 
we, we, you know, we say kill two birds with one stone. You can learn about um, some cool stuff about fitness and health. And at the same time, you'll, of course, be reading in English and learning vocab and learning more English, too. So it's a great way to do both. All those books are available in ebook. You can get them on Amazon or probably Kobo.com and others. Alrighty then. Well, lots of love to you. I will see you next time and let's all get ready because I'm looking forward to it. Sunday, my fasting begins. All right. Join my VIP program, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time.